Hello, because Tom Scott and the boys aren't doing it anymore, we're playing Citation Needed. Joining me today is Fiona, and it's Fiona's turn, turn to subject me to the challenge. Yes. So I've semi-randomly selected an article from Wikipedia. Um, I, I did decide to go for something that I found personally interesting, um, and also something which was suggested when I googled really weird Wikipedia articles. Um, this actually was one of, I think, probably the least weird that I came across. So the title of this article is Oliver Cromwell's Head. Oliver Cromwell's Oliver Head. Cromwell's okay, head. so... Oliver, I'm not British, but Oliver Cromwell was the Puritan who was Prime Minister after the Civil War? Mm, so so it, you, it is related to the Civil War, but he was sort of during and... and Proceeding and during the Civil War. He did something which ended the Civil War. He chopped off... It was either Charles or a Stuart. It was, in fact, Charles Stuart. Charles, Charles I of England. So, ding, yes, he did indeed cut off Why are you Charles's British head. so unimaginative with your names for kings? Why have why, why we got about seven Edwards or whatever? That's just a popular name. It's even before Twilight. So yes, King Charles I, um, King of England, okay, so um, really Char got... Charles Stuart got his head chopped off because they off, lost yes. the Civil War. And... and Oliver Cromwell becomes Lord Protector and ruler of the English Commonwealth. Ah, yes, Lord Protector. Right. So why, what, what happened to his head? Why, why is his head a particularly important historical artefact? So Stuart's head. Char no, Oliver Cromwell's head. Oliver Cromwell's head. head. Yes, Oliver Cromwell's head. Because uh, he was the warts and all guy, paint me warts and all. He did cause... say that. That is true. Um, because however, of, he... because at, at the time there were no cameras, so artists would yep. paint you, and generally they would be uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, kind. Yeah, generous. Yes, and make you look better than you were. And Cromwell said, yes. "Paint me warts and all." Yes. So Cromwell was one of these. He was an people. ugly warty fella. He was an ugly warty fella. Um, However, this, he probably was an even uglier, wartier fellow by the time his head became an, a particularly significant thing. So, uh, so after Cromwell died, they went back, they just instituted a constitutional monarchy, right, and brought the king back. So... Yeah, so but, he did actually pass his position on to his son. Right. So after Oliver Cromwell died, um, he was buried. Do you want to have a guess where he might have been buried? Um, that that Abbey, Stephen Hawking and Isaac Newton. Yes, Ding. Yeah, I'll give you um, that. I, I, I keep wanting to say Northanger Abbey, but that's a Jane Austen <laughs> novel. Um, no, nah, what is it? Houses of Parliament? Is that a name? Westminster. Westminster Abbey, Ding. Okay. So yes, he was buried in Westminster Abbey. His position passed on to his son, right. Richard. However, his son wasn't quite as good at, you know, keeping the royal loyalists in check. So did his son just keep his dad's head around to, look, look, it, it, it's dad, you liked him, right? All, almost, almost. So his, his son did eventually get overthrown. Right. And King Charles II, who's the man with the incredible hair, um, in, the, in the late 1600s, he has, he has spectacular hair, um... <laughs> gets instituted as King Charles II. He was recalled from exile. And Charles, Charles institutes a whole new parliament. He gets rid of all of these regicides that he refers to the people who have chopped off his father's head. Mm. Gets rid of all of these people who were loyal to that regime and puts a new parliament together. And that particular parliament ordered something to happen to Cromwell. What was that? So they exhumed him and chopped off his head. They did, yes, ding. They did actually exhume the body, and then first they hung him up and from the morning until four in the afternoon, and then he and two others were cut down and they chopped the head off. How many years was it after he'd been interred? Because he's yeah, I mean, decomposing. So he, yeah, so he, he, wouldn't have, he wouldn't have looked awfully good. Um, however, it was, it was quite interesting... He didn't look as bad as he might have done. So, 
pumped his veins full of lead or however they embalmed him. They, they embalmed him, Dean. They embalmed him with mm-hmm. another heavy metal. Mercury? Mm, a bit lighter. Also a very useful green dye. Copper? Arsenic. Ah. So you can actually it's a very good preservative. Oh, so they okay. actually he was he was embalmed and he was sealed in a lead coffin which was then sealed inside a wooden coffin. So they chopped off an extremely poisonous head and Yes, yes, and then what did they do with it? Kept it in Parliament. No, what they did they did display it, but where did they display it? Uh Whitehall. So it doesn't specifically... Uh, actually, yes, no, you are right, it does say. So, yeah, ding. He was, his head was placed in a 20-foot spike above Westminster Hall, which was where they'd tried Charles I. So what happened to it in 1685? So, sorry, when did it go up? So it went up in... Doesn't actually say. Okay. Um... That's very interesting. Oh no, it must have been the re-establishment of the monarchy, which was in 1659. So which seems like an awfully long yeah, time. Yeah, so, it so it's seem well correct. preserved. So not so it's not as though crow's going to come and eat it if it's full no. of arsenic. So it could have been up there quite a while, but so so something happened to it, it in 1685. So either okay, I'm guessing. I don't know which order to guess here, either stolen, struck by lightning, or just blew off. Oh, ding. It got struck by lightning in a storm, and his head rolled off the pole. And so so what... now, now you've got a warty, arsenic-laden yeah. head of a former Lord Protector just rolling down the street, and what, charred. And what happened to it? From Someone there. stole it? Yes. <laughs> it became a collector's item, and it changed hands. And it has been through the hands of many different collectors over the years, until when? So either this, so that question means it's probably now in a museum or destroyed. But I, I still want to imagine it's, there's just some eccentric British collector <laughs> who just still has Oliver Cromwell's head in their display room next to I don't know what British eccentric collectors collect, like the Charles and Diana. Wedding plates or whatever. <laughs> the, the Quality Street tin, which celebrates the wedding of uh, William and Kate. It's just, you know, have, do have a look in here, and it's actually got all of the Cromwell's it's head still got in it. biscuits or whatever. Yes. No, so it, it, it has passed through the hands of private collectors and museum owners, and it has finally been buried. But when was it buried? It's got to be recent. It, um... Give me a decade. Oh... Um... 1990s. A little bit earlier, but you're not far off. It was actually buried in Sydney Sussex College in Cambridge in uh, 1960. 1960. So why didn't they stick it back in the Abbey? Uh, so I think the point was that they had um, disposed of the bodies. Right. As he was obviously somebody who had usurped a king, who was chosen by God, um, and it was... The body had been destroyed, so I don't mm. think they had anywhere to actually reunite the body and the head. So, um, yes. So. So it's buried warts and all in Cambridge. It is buried. His head is buried in Sydney Sussex College. Oh, sorry, college. Right. So yes, and a few, a few people didn't. A few people attended, um, representatives of the college, and the the burial was not actually announced until two years later. Oh. So so. The authenticity has been called into question on several occasions. We just found a warty old, warty old head. Yes. The char it a bit, shock it with lightning. Yes. So, so many people um, just thought it wasn't real, and quite recently, um, it was it was suggested that the uh, the head they buried was not actually the head of Oliver Cromwell. Dun dun dun! Cromwell's yes. head so, is still out there somewhere. So why? Why was it that the archaeologists thought, think that this is not actually the head of Oliver Cromwell? Not enough warts. Not enough warts? Not quite, but it is related to something to do with the um, It doesn't features. look like him. And it wasn't going to look like him anyway. He'd been well, worried I mean, for many well, years. Even... Yes, well, I mean, but teeth are wrong or something. And... No, it's more to do with what happened to the head after his dismemberment. 
So, like, if they'd stuck it on a pike, there's going to be a dirty great hole in the bottom? Yes. So the skull was pierced from the top, not from the bottom. I'll give you that. So, ding. So there was... It had actually been spiked from the top downwards, not the bottom upwards, suggesting that this was not the head which had been placed on a spike by Parliament. Do they... Maybe they just decided to stick his head on upside down because he was a usurper or whatever. He may have. He may have done. Um, they may have done, but um, no. It's apparently, it, they think this could have just been another random head that uh, <laughs> a random head that, that was struck by lightning, had a pike through it, and full of arsenic. Yeah, sound. Yeah. So they 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 just decided because they're just uh, all over the British countryside. Yeah. So his head may very well have just rolled down the street into a gutter, and you know they just decided to oh, oh thrown on the plague cart with the yeah others. exactly, yeah. and they've just found another convenient head. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think of it so far, Rubbish! Yeah. So that's the story of Oliver Cromwell's head. Yeah. Wow. Man, it could still be out there. It could still, in fact, be out there. So they, they, you don't, you never know. It could, it could well still be recovered. Maybe it's under a Tesco's parking garage or something, the way Richard the Third was. It was, it was a good one, but yes. Anyway, so you have won uh, a German, um, exactly what a German electric electronic band has caught on their fishing trip. It's a tangerine bream. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>